Good afternoon, I'm Margaret McCrory and even though I'm superintendent at Rowlands Pharmacy, uh, I'm also a member of the professional practice group which involves corporate multiples, independent multiples as well. And as a group, we've looked at the inspection process and shared some thoughts and views with the GPHC, which we'd like to share with you today. The change that the new inspection process brought in was significant, far-reaching and ambitious, and I think we've got to recognise that. The work that the GPHC did in preparation through the sounding boards, the training of inspectors, has gone a long way to make the implementation as easy as it has been. However, there were obviously some tactical and operational teething issues, which Mark has alluded to earlier on, and some of those things were like actually forgetting that some pharmacists work extended hours and therefore work shifts. Therefore, it's very difficult to get a two-day turnaround when you've got a pharmacist who is, only works three days a week in working extended hours. Also, the outcome focus was a challenge to get people to understand what the inspectors were looking for, and that took a lot of communication and effort on the part of the superintendents and their teams to try and educate their pharmacy teams. However, we do have more fundamental concerns, and that's around the grading and the length of time that inspections take. The tactical and operational teething issues can all be addressed through time and just by working together and talking together to resolve the issues. With regards to the grading, whatever title the grading has, we believe in a four-point grading system, the midpoint is always going to be the average, the pass, satisfactory. Anything below the midpoint will be classed as below standard and anything above the midpoint will be classed as above standard. We did some work on PV and we have looked at our results and gradings. These represent roughly 350 gradings for each of our uh, groups and it's from CCA, CCA, Corporate Company Chemist Association, and AIM. 96 and 92% of our pharmacies are being graded satisfactory. 3% and 6% were graded over the two different timescales as excellent, with 1 and 2% being graded as poor. This to us is a broad church, and too broad a church. What we did was we looked at the inspection reports where there was no advice given by the inspectors. If you do that, it changes the picture significantly. We moved to 65 and 40 percent potentially being graded as good. So if the inspector cannot tell us to do anything different, why can that pharmacy not be graded above the midpoint, whatever the word you want to use? We know that 99.98 per cent of items dispensed in pharmacy are dispensed accurately through a review that we have done with Pharmacy Voice. We know pharmacy is safe. And our major concern is that with the satisfactory grading being below midpoint and the majority of pharmacists being in it, the public perception will be that pharmacy is unsafe. And we don't want that to happen, particularly when the NHS and the government are trying to push more people into pharmacy for self-care as their first port of call, away from accident and emergency and away from the GPs. We also have a challenge when we're talking to our pharmacy teams. They know that the pharmacy down the road, which may be a Rowlands pharmacy, is not quite as good as them, but actually they've all got satisfactory. And they're saying, well, why are they graded the same as us? We know we provide a better service. And it's difficult for us to get the buy-in to our staff of this grading. And I know, as superintendent, that I provide my pharmacies with all the tools they need to achieve, to meet the premises standards. We've gone through them with a fine tooth comb. We've looked at them. We've given tools, whether it's support from head office, whether it's manuals, whether it's processes, SOPs. But as you can see, even if one of my pharmacists from this is following all the processes exactly, they still can't achieve a good. And that's my concern. As superintendent, I should be able to give my pharmacies the opportunity to achieve good. And I'm not I'd be able to do that at the moment. 
you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. Inspection timings can last anything from two hours to seven hours. And I recognise that seven hours is much less likely now, but it was there at the beginning. We need to review how the inspection process is carried out. We currently, as Mark says, look at all the standards, but actually we may not need to look at all the standards. We could potentially review at principal level, identifying key standards. I believe that if an inspection lasts more than three hours, we're actually putting <coughs> patients at risk because no matter how pleasant and how nice the inspectors are, it is a stressful experience for people. And we need to give them the opportunity to show what they can do without putting them under undue stress. <coughs> so in summary, we have a concern about the public perception of current, gra current gradings and what the four-point grading system looks like. We would like recognition where the inspector has no additional advice to offer because we feel those pharmacies should be recognised as good. And we need to reduce inspection times by doing things differently. My final comment is, is that pharmacy teams care about their patients and they're very proud about what they do. They actually, once the inspection process is over, a lot of them quite enjoy the experience of sharing what they do with the inspector and actually having the report back to see how good they are. So all I would ask is to please make the inspection process a method to encourage people to do better. Thank you.